Hello and welcome to the Mandalorian Review Show on the Merc with the Movie blog podcast feed. Every week we review each episode of Disney Plus' The Mandalorian. I'm one of your hosts, Sean, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Wade. How's it going, Wade? Not too bad. Boba Fett about got his ass kicked yeah, by a, a space rhino. I'm just going to give you a little peek behind the curtain real quick. I have two monitors. I have notes on one and Discord up on the other. Every time I do an intro to a podcast and I go, how's it going? Insert name here. I turn my head and look at the Discord <laughs> as if I'm looking at you. I, I don't know why. It's um, great. That's okay, man. Sometimes when we record stuff, I give a thumbs up to the computer yeah, yeah. <laughs> as if the other person can see me. <laughs> Um, today we're going to be covering The Mandalorian Chapter 2, The Child, directed by Rick Famuyiwa and written by John Favreau. I love that name. I love The Child. Um, just because I love Baby Yoda so much that when the, when the episode started and it was like, The Child, I was like, yes, that's what we're going to get. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to jump into the episode. We're going to do some general discussion of the show. This is probably going to be... Spoiler still. I would say anything we talk about on here is probably yeah, going to be spoilers. We're not, spoiler. going to, we're not going to hold back here. So we're going to talk about some general discussion. We're going to take a break in a little bit. And then when we come back, we'll do uh, some more in-depth discussion of the episode. So, Wade, what were your thoughts on the episode? Uh, overall, I love it. Just like the first episode, overall, I love it. Um, I didn't hear any music in this episode that was that felt out of place to me like I did mm-hmm. in episode yeah. one in that one scene. Um, so, but it, you, so that was good. Um, yeah, overall, I absolutely love this episode. I love where it's going. I've heard some people say that it was a filler episode, which I, I agree with, but it did not bother me at all. Uh-huh. As far as filler episodes go, I thought it was awesome. Um, there was, there was just, there was action with the Jawas and the space rhino and yeah, that thing was little awesome. baby Yoda showing what he's all about. he well he or she but baby yeah. yoda is all about and yeah and it was great to see nick nolte back again too because yes. uh, you know we weren't sure if we'd see him again but i think this is awesome. it though i don't think we see him again after this i think that was i think that was his uh those, i think he these did. were his two episodes the first time I watched this episode, um, I was thinking that too. Like when the Mandalorian was flying off, and it showed, uh, and it showed him sitting on the uh, oh, the blurg. Isn't that yeah. the name of it? Yes, yeah, I yeah. said it Good right job. last night. And uh, he was sitting on the blurg. And the first time I watched the episode, I'm thinking, okay, you know, we're gonna see him pop up again at some point later. But then I, the second time I watched it, it was, um, it was when. The, the Mandalorian was flying off and Nolte put his hand on his hip. Just uh-huh. that that old, the total yeah. Western scene. And yes. I was like, okay, th- we're not going to see him again. I yeah. agree with you. You know, I was like, that was like his final, like, yep, my part's done. And he's watching the Mandalorian right off into the sunset. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, like, we have to remember, we haven't seen, uh, what's her, we, well, we haven't seen Giancarlo Espos- Esposito yet. He's playing the uh, the Imperial uh, Grand Moff yeah. or whatever. We haven't seen uh, what's her name? God damn. Um, oh, she's playing the girl. She's playing uh, Cara Dune. Yeah, Gina Carano. We haven't seen her yet. I mean, Bill Burr. That's what I'm waiting for, baby. We Bill, seen Burr Bill Burr in the house. I can't but wait, dude. We've got one, two, three, four. We got six episodes left, and as far as uh, the co-stars go because Bill Burr is a guest star, but as far as the co-stars go, I mean, we still haven't seen Gina Carano or Giancarlo Esposito at all. So like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't see, yeah, I really don't see Nick Nolte coming back. I thought he was good. I thought he was good in these two episodes. So I was, I was happy sure. with the story they told with him. Um, it might be cool to see him come back for like one episode next season. Oh, definitely. If um, next season, I'd love to see him again, at least. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so when you talk about it, some of it d- d- feeling like a filler episode, I don't disagree. I think what I've been thinking, and this is all uh, baseless um, uh, speculation, the this episode and episode one very much felt like one episode put into two to me. So I'm wondering, again, baseless speculation so don't take any of this as anything 
if maybe these were originally one episode and they split it up so that they'd have something on Tuesday for launch and something on Friday and going forward, we'll get longer episodes. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I'm thinking that too, because uh, one, it just makes sense. And two, you would think that there's, there's no way that all the episodes are this short. Yeah. That being said, I think I said last night on um, after live, it, if it does end up being that short, I can't really judge it until I've seen the episodes. Cause like I woke up on Friday, I guess, and I watched the episode before I went to work. And when I turned it on, I saw there was only 32 minutes and I was like, Oh, that really sucks. I don't like that. And I watched the episode and I finished it. And I was like, you know what? Actually, I, I'm okay with that. There wasn't anything else I really wanted in there. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, I would much rather see, something that's shorter and tighter mm -hmm. than something that's longer and has a bunch of crap that's just to fill time. Exactly. exactly. So, so yeah, it, it, it flowed very well and it was, it, it was spot on, dude. It was very good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that makes complete sense. What you're saying about them, maybe splitting them up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, we don't have any inside under the board, uh, contacts at Disney. So, you know, none of that. We're not, uh, we're not Finstock. We don't know everybody, but, um, <laughs> Gucci. Gucci. Yeah, so hmm. speaking generally, the score, nothing bothered you. I didn't really notice any new tracks, but there was, you know, uh, still the same stuff. I haven't listened to the score on Spotify yet. I listened to the first episode on Spotify, but I haven't listened to the second one. Nothing on the score took me out of it. Um, no. but, but what I am loving, though, is the little – or the little, little uh, tribal drums and the yeah. flute – the, yes. the tribal drums reminds me completely of Mandalorian, of course. Yeah. But then the flutes reminds me of like some old kung fu wanderer kind of stuff, uh -huh. which is really cool to me because I I am getting a little that music gives me a little bit of a martial arts kung fu vibe from it, which is really cool. Yeah, that might just be me. No, no, I I, I get it too. I I really uh that flute I, is rocking, dude. I'm really enjoying it uh, as far as just some more general ideas about the episode. I really liked that, you know, last episode, Werner Herzog, Werner Herzog uh, the client said, you've heard you're the best bounty hunter in the Parsec, right? And we, we see why he says the Parsec in this episode, because he's not the best, right? right he's not, he's, no. <laughs> he's a badass, but he's not a you know unbeatable god and i really liked that i really liked yeah, that we got too. to see him struggle in this episode a bit i really i really enjoyed that uh there was one other thing i wanted to talk about before we went uh before we went deep oh so this episode one of the things that i i'm not sure i was disappointed in it it was just a change from the first episode was the first episode set up so many different story arcs and then this episode was like all right here are the six story arcs we have that we've set up we're going to focus completely on this one and we'll get right. back to the others later. Like, you know, there was nothing really about any of the Imperial stuff. There was nothing about the Mandalorian stuff in this one. It was really all about baby Yoda in this episode. Yeah. And I liked yep. that. I was just a little surprised that they, they decided to go so hard into one storyline instead of continuing to progress all of them that they set up in the first episode. And then that goes back to making sense to what you were saying about maybe uh -huh. they split the episode yeah. in half. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cuz yeah, that yeah, I guess if if that's the case then all that other stuff would have about as much time as in the episode because in episode 1 it was a majority of the other stuff and then it was a little bit of baby Yoda at the end. So if all of this is baby Yoda and that's supposed to be one episode, that would make a little more sense with um with the storytelling. Uh you have anything – you have any more general ideas on the episode? Oh, man, I'm ready to jump into some uh, some shit here. I do have some issues with this episode, so. Ooh. All right, yep. we're going to take a quick break to hear about some other Merc with the Movie blog shows, and when we return, we're going to go in-depth. Hello, everybody. Jay Wade. And Kaylin here. To tell you about SEN After Live. It's an after show podcast where we expand on the week of craziness on SEN Live as well as have guests on to join in the fun. 
Yep, and we get personal too. We do movie reviews, and at times we go way off the rails, which I guarantee is always Kaylin's fault. Hey, how rude and not true. So come join us on the Mark with a Movie Blog feed, and remember to rate, share, and subscribe. And as always, enjoy. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah, host of Go Get That Rose podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to talking about all things Bachelor Nation. Join Jay Wade, a man in his 40s who is recently new to all things Bachelor Nation, and myself, someone who has been watching passionately for the past three years, as we review, share our thoughts on each episode of whatever show is currently on TV, whether that is Bachelor, Bachelorette, or Bachelor in Paradise. We might not even know everyone's name, but we have fun nonetheless. You can find us on Merkwood and Movie Blog Feed wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey there, Schmodown fans, this is Josh the Merc Rainer, and I am here to tell you about my show, Talkin' Schmodown. Whether it's Andrew Guy getting hit with a chair, John Roca screaming, Outlaw! Or the emotional retirement of the Shirewolf, I talk about it all. So you can catch me right here on Anchor and all the other major podcasting platforms. So, as I ask every episode, are you ready to talk Schmodown? I am. Hey, it's Sarah, and I'd like to tell you about Afterlife. It's a weekly Collider Live after show podcast where Mike, Sean, and I give our takes on Roxy and Dorena's annex, on Yodi's producing skills, and whatever Cody and Alex are up to in that booth. In addition to having guests, we expand on the crew's discussions and add our own craziness to the mix. You can find the show on Merkwin and Movie Blog Feed on all the podcasting platforms. See you soon! All right, check out those other shows. They are excellent. Now we're going to jump into some in-depth discussion of the episode. We have two topics picked out. Uh, we're going to do them kind of chronologically. One of them happens towards the beginning of the episode. The other one happens towards the end. So we're going to start with that Jawa fight, Wade. You uh, you yeah. said that you really wanted to talk about this Jawa fight. Yeah, man. Um, the first time I watched it, it was just – it was pretty cool. Uh-huh. And I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool, man. And – and it definitely had the feel from uh, Boba Fett in uh, Return of the Jedi climbing yes, up. Yes, uh, or Not climbing. It was Luke who was climbing up the side of, yeah. uh, of uh, Jabba's barge. But it had that kind of feel with, with yeah. the Mandalorian climbing up that. I remember that was cool. Um, yeah, then the second time I watched it, I was like, okay, I was wrong the first time I watched it. This mm-hmm. is awesome. Yeah, and the second time I watched it, I I started to get a, a Mad Max vibe off of it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I hadn't even thought about that until you just said it. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it was just cool, you know. And the little Jawas opening the flaps, yeah. and and <laughs> it was just so. And uh, uh, yeah, dude. And then when they're throwing they're throwing stuff yeah. down at them, that yeah. then reminded me of like some in, some uh, medieval stuff. Like kings oh, and yeah, castles and stuff. Rocks and off the side, yeah. Yeah, man. It was just, it was really cool. And it was cool to see the Jawas, like, in a fight. You, yeah, we've never seen, capable. all we've seen is the aftermath of them getting slaughtered by the stormtroopers on yeah. Tatooine, you know? Yeah, we see why, like, they have any sort of power structure at all. Uh, I also enjoyed it a lot more the second time, because the first time I watched it, I kept going, just dude, why are you leaving Baby Yoda? Go go back. <laughs> just, just like, Baby Yoda was keeping up though as much was, as he could. Yeah. It was, but like I just need to because earlier in the episode, I don't want to talk about it too much, but we, we did have a scene where you know they're walking through the canyon and they get attacked. So there are other bounty hunters after Baby Yoda. And I'm just like, no, stop. Because I was worried that it was gonna be a thing where like he was gonna get knocked out by the Jawas, he was gonna wake up and baby Yoda was gonna be gone. And then we were going to spend some time getting Baby Yoda back again. And I was like, I didn't want that to happen because Baby Yoda needs to stay safe. But uh, thankfully that didn't happen. But so I guess on the second viewing, when I knew what was going to happen, I allowed myself to enjoy it more instead of being worried about the baby. Uh, I care too it, much about Baby Yoda. I'm just I saying. Love, I love Baby Yoda so much. Here, Listen, if it was a choice between all my friends and family and Baby Yoda, I'd choose Baby Yoda. Oh it's, my gosh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I will admit he's cute. He, she, it's cute. Yeah. But I mean, especially, anyway. especially after this episode, though. Yeah, I guess. When it like walks over and it tries to use, I, I assume oh, it was going to okay. use the force. To yeah, heal. when it kept and it kept doing it, that yeah. was awesome. And it's like, okay, that's cute. Okay, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I love Baby Yoda. Uh, best part of the show, easily. Um, I don't know about that, but well, he uh, dies, and then okay. we move on to real stuff. Um, uh, I think the Mandalorian is probably the best part of the show. I'm so impressed with how Pedro Pascal is playing that character and how they're how they're how they're getting the character across to the audience without taking his mask off. Yeah, for sure. Um, I hope he never takes it off. I want him to take it off at the very end. Nah. Just once. Nah. I think it'd be so much cooler if we go the entire thing and, and he never takes it off. I wanted to take it off and it's just a jaw underneath. Oh my gosh. On stilts. Yeah. Um, or on another Jawa's (laughs) shoulders. Yeah. (laughs) Um, hey, let me ask you, uh, given that Jawa scene and yeah. their vehicle and all of that, um, very reminiscent of New Hope. Yes. What do you think the chances are that he is actually on Tatooine? No, because he's on, they named the planet, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's on. Oh, did they? I think he's on okay. uh, Arvala 7. So then how do the Jawas... One, how I, are they spread out across planets? And two, how do they all build the same exact vehicle? Well, my my thought process is that Jawas are just like a species. Like, like you know, humans are everywhere in Star Wars. Twi'leks are everywhere in Star Wars. Like, they can hop on a ship and go somewhere else. And, I mean, sand crawlers, I, I'd assume sand crawlers are just transported between planets. Like, that's just their, their thing. Like, we see X-Wings everywhere. We see... You know, the tanks and stuff. We see the same kind of tanks and stuff. I just think it's like it got flown there by by a ship. They probably got dropped off. True. True. I, I, yeah. But I, I, I want – speaking about the Jawas specifically, what I was talking to somebody about and that I'm very happy with this show is this show is doing something that I think was perfect for the non-movie material, which is really getting in there and fleshing out the ideas set before. Um, I like the movies when they're progressing and they're setting new things up. And instead of, I don't need them to go back and expand on on stuff that we've already seen. I want them to keep bringing new things in, in the movies. And I like that in this show, we're just going into the original trilogy and we are just expanding it and like turning it in from like, we're turning it from like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but, but from like, a little pizza, like a, we're turning it from like a slice of pizza into a full pizza. Like, uh, right. I don't even, I don't even know how to describe what I'm trying to say. I sound like a madman, but we're <laughs> you going are in a madman, but you make I sense. Am. I get it. You know, we're taking all these like little ideas that we see for like a minute in a new hope and we're stretching them out and we're expanding upon them. And like, we saw the inside of a, of a, of a, of a sand crawler for the first time, you know, yeah. he was in the cockpit, well, no, like, wait. stuff like that. No, we've seen the inside of a sand crawler in New Hope. Don't they don't go inside? Oh, we do, they do go inside yeah, with uh, with R two and. But uh, we haven't seen the control room before. Oh well, that's true. That's true. So, I did like that when he's sitting in the control room and it bumps, bang, hits his head. I love that. Yeah. Uh, this show's pretty funny. I mean, it's a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. So yeah, I think that's something that the shows can do really well in, like the comics and the books and stuff. So I, I'm glad that they're really going into that with this. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh ov- like I said, overall, completely loving this. Yeah. So l- let's move on to the other the other topic. Uh, baby Yoda did a little thing. I was waiting for it. I did not think it was going to happen because I wanted it so badly. Um, and I think I think we talked about this on the show in episode one. But baby Yoda, you know, uh, Mandalorian's about to get taken out by that Rhino thing. Baby Yoda reaches out with his hand. Up goes the rhino. Yeah, uh, that's when I was like, man, please, please, please do not let this be a clone of Yoda. Please do not let this be something that, like, palp, like, don't let it have anything to do with Palpatine created Anakin and now the Force created this thing to counterbalance. And I just, I just, 
please don't be any they in my mind they better have a really good place to go with this baby yoda thing because i just i want things that are new it just to me yeah. so far this feels like they're going back to the well but i'm trying not to freak out because this is only the yeah. second episode so i mean i'm no. still I, no matter what i'm completely on board yeah. Um, I just, I'm just not down. Yoda would, I love Yoda. Okay. But Yoda uh-huh. was never my favorite character my and favorite. I never understood the obsession with Yoda. Like, yeah. yeah, Yoda's cool. But just for me personally, I never understood the, the mass obsession with him. So in my mind, I'm like, you know, I see baby Yoda and to me, it's like, Oh dude, Yoda for real. <laughs> Come on, man. So, I mean, I don't, I just hope it's not, I hope it's a, something new with this species and it's not just rehashing something from the past or I, like I said, I just really hope it's not actually a clone of Yoda or something like that. Just, uh, I'm, I'm hoping personally that it's just, it's another species. Oh, it's another of Yoda species. And we just learned that Yoda species is very rare and very in tune with the force. Because this is three for three that we've seen, and it's three for three that have the Force, right? Yeah. All three of the Yoda species that we've seen all can use the Force. I I hope that's what it is. Uh, with Dave Filoni being involved, I I see the possibility of him going in deep on the Force uh, and talking about that. I kind of hope he doesn't. Uh, even though I like those ideas, I like it when it's less obvious. And I... Because... Because yeah. the Force, to me, is a very... Uh, and I, I'm not even sure if saying it... I think the Force in general is a very spiritual thing. Yes, I was about to say the same exact word. So when when you explain it too much and you give away all the secrets of the spiritualness, I think it kind of takes away from it. Uh, that's why I don't like the midichlorians. Yeah, ugh. I just, I don't like that it explains this kind of thing that's supposed to be blind faith because that's what makes it powerful, yeah. right? You know? Um, if you just know I've got midichlorians, like, it's rid of the whole, like, what Yoda says. You can lift the X-Wing because you believe, right? Or you can't do it because you don't believe. It, it's not about your strength. It's about whether you believe that you can do it or not. And if you know that you've got a fucking midichlory count of, like, 300 million, you're like, yeah, I can do whatever I want. doesn't matter. I'm the strongest Jedi in the world. Uh so, you know, I, I hope it doesn't really have to do with all the Anakin being created by the Force stuff and all that, because I'm not a massive fan of all that stuff. But with Filoni being involved, that's the only reason that I think that it possibly could have to do with that. Yeah. Uh, personally, I was hoping that there would be no Force whatsoever in this, um, especially with it having uh, a, appearing to have died out between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. Um, I just, I was really hoping to see no Force whatsoever and just see a straight-up Star Wars show. But, uh, again, I'm not complaining. Like, what I want is, what I want doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I will take whatever is given me, and I will either enjoy it or I won't. And so far, I am enjoying it, regardless of of what little tweaks I would personally like yeah. to see. Um, so, yeah, I'm not complaining or, you're, you know, nitpicking too much or anything. I, you know, I just, it's, it's a fan, and everyone has yeah. that, where they're like, eh, I would rather if this had happened. Of course. You know? but, um, but, yeah, but that scene, though, with him going into that cave of that rhino, yeah. and that whole thing was awesome, dude. And, I love yeah, and for it to lay him on his ass in the mud yeah. like that, it, it you know, like you were saying earlier, it just shows that he's not he's not unstoppable. He's not yeah. the best. Yeah, he can die. You know, yes, and absolutely. He would have died. died. And, and I like that they have him. him. They show his scars. They yeah. show him trying to you know do uh do medical attention to himself and stuff. I like that. I thought that was. I was surprised that happened. The show's rated TV PG. And I don't know what the differences between a PG TV show and a PG movie are, but him stabbing the rhino in this episode and him trying to like uh, fuse his wound together, like I thought I was like, this is TV PG because like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't gross or anything. 
Right, but right. I thought it crossed the line of what would be in a PG movie. I was just surprised that it was rated TV PG, but um, I'm happy that they showed that. You know, yeah. I think that's a scene that we needed, and I really, really, really enjoyed the fight. It, um, it reminded me of what I think is probably my favorite part of Attack of the Clones, which is the arena scene. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good scene. You know, uh, except this time the the uh, the guy in the Mandalorian armor didn't get taken out like a chump. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't even get me started. They totally they screwed up the villains in those prequels. Oh, really so bad. bad, so bad. But you know, uh, yeah, I, I really, I really liked that scene. You and I are kind of on you. You and I are on the opposite side of the force thing, but arriving at the same conclusion. Where I was not as interested in the show to begin with because I didn't think the force was going to be in it. And to me, the force is Star Wars. Uh, that's what makes Star Wars interesting to me. I think that. Everything else that's in Star Wars, you can find somewhere else in another, like, fictional world, whereas the Force is completely unique. There's nothing quite like it in other universes. So I was disappointed when I was thinking there wasn't going to be anything to do with the Force. And then I watched the first episode, and I thought it was so good that I was like, okay, it's not what I would have wanted, but it's good enough that I don't care. Like, they're doing a good job, and that's all that matters, right? So yeah, you and I yeah. have the opposite perspective on the Force thing, but arriving at the same conclusion of as long as it's good, it doesn't matter. So, yep. uh, and it's I think good. that's interesting. So, it is good. It's very good. I think, Very uh, good. So, do huh, you have anything else you want to say about this scene, Wade? Um... No, man. Uh, it was just a good scene, and and my favorite part of it was was like I said that the Mandalorian got put on his ass in the mud. It just showed that you know, it just showed he's not the baddest thing out there, and so I like that. Definitely. So the one thing I wanted to do, and I have not yet told you about this, but one thing I wanted to do is. I want to try and keep a ranking of the episodes, see what we think about each episode right. afterwards. So um, let's start out here. This episode or episode one, which one would you, which one do you think was better? As far as set up the first episode, but as mm -hmm. far as, as far as content, I think the second episode for me. Yeah. I I have to agree. I I finished the this episode at first, and I thought I liked the first episode more. But that's just because I think the first the first episode set up more. Whereas I think the execution from this episode was better than, um, better than what we got in the first episode. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep our eyes on that. We'll uh we'll see we'll see Ooh. where that ends up going. I like to Something. I like to make lists. Something just hit me, dude. All right. Well, that can't – okay, if there was two different directors for the first and second episodes, then that couldn't have been oh, one episode. That's true. That just hit me. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. All right. Well, we'll have to see what happens next week with the lengths and whatnot. Yeah. And, and again, as long as it's good, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. We'll yeah, see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But as soon as we do get an episode that's – you know that that the length is a detriment uh we're gonna talk about it uh <laughs> yeah uh is there anything else you want to bring about the episode wade we're you know we're we've still got a little bit of time here we can uh we can talk about some other stuff if you want um i don't know man i personally i've touched on everything nick nolte was awesome uh and and uh his final scene was pretty cool um uh, I oh I did I did like when he brought the egg back to the uh, yeah. <laughs> to the Jawas and they cut it open and were just digging in there eating the the rhino fetus that was yeah great. that was that was so like disturbing it was very it was very good yeah, really yeah that. that was I, cute they were totally into that oh okay I'll say one thing that I think was a little bit of a missed opportunity uh, and maybe it wouldn't have worked as well but when they were fixing the ship. And you started to hear the clanging of the hammer. I thought we were going to flash back to his childhood again, like we did in the first episode. Mm, and I kind mm. of wish that we did, because it seems like in the first episode, the clanging of the hammer was like a trigger for him to remember right. the Clone Wars and stuff and like the Separatists. But uh, I kind of wish we had gotten more of his childhood when they were fixing the ship, just bang, bang, bang. And, you know, quick flashes of his childhood, maybe see a little bit more this time. But uh, 
at the end of the day, I'm sure we'll get that later. So it's not too much of a big deal, but I, I do kind of wish we had gotten that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right though, man. I got a feeling, uh, this next episode's going to start picking up pace. A hundred percent. Yeah. And also we're off that planet. I liked that planet a lot. Uh, I am a little tired of the desert atmosphere in star Wars, but I thought that this one, this one was more similar to Jetta than anything else to me. Uh, but I still really liked it specifically in this episode when they went to like um, when they went to where like the cave was and those uh, those mountains all around him. I thought that design was really really cool. So I'm excited to go to a different planet and kind of see what else is up. I know that there's like I think there's like a uh, swamp planet almost that was shown in the in the trailers. I'm excited to kind of get there and see something like that. We haven't really seen a swamp planet since Dagobah. So I was gonna say maybe it is Dagobah. <sighs> maybe. That'd be maybe, the, maybe Baby Yoda leads him to Dagobah. Baby Yoda takes him to Dagobah and is like, "Plead his where, training, complete uh, <laughs> the Mandalorian." <laughs> okay, hang on. I do have a question for you. Do you think the Mandalorian is going to hand over that baby to the Imperials? No, no. Yeah. If yeah. he was going to, then he would. He would have. If he was going to, then I think his actions would be a lot different. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. Like the whole finger putting the finger, the ET yeah. moment at the end of the first episode. Um, it just no, I don't get that vibe from him at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I think he may end up stashing Baby Yoda somewhere, and then going to find out mm-hmm. why they want Baby Yoda and try yeah. to get more information. But I don't think he's going to turn it over. But I also don't think it's going to make it. It's going to live through the season. Yeah, I, I I don't think he's gonna hand it over either. I I think whenever Nick Nolte's character was like, "May this thing bring you a big reward and stuff," and it would cut to the Mandalorian, I think he looked a little uncomfortable. Uh, with the idea of well, him being him. a foundling, I'm sure that yeah. has a lot to do with it, you know. So I'm interested to see if he even brings it, because like you like you said, it could be that he sashes Yoda and then goes to meet the Imperials, or he could bring Yoda to the Imperials and then go, you know what, I'm not gonna do this, and that scene. He could do that, and then you know that scene in the trailer where he walks out of the door and he starts shooting all the stormtroopers? Yep, that could be it. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's like, all right, never mind, I'm taking Baby Yoda and I'm going, and he fights his way out. Who knows? We'll have to check out next time. That's just a little bit of speculation on the tail end for you guys. We're going to do socials now. So, Wade, where can people find you? Well, y'all can find me on the Twitter at jwade1134. That is the letter J, W-A-D-E-1134. Awesome. And you can also the shameless plugging, you know, when I host a show, Wade, we do shameless plugging. Uh, you also do uh, SCN Afterlife. Feed, yes, right? yes. Uh, I also, uh, Kaylin and I both uh, are uh, hosts of SCN Afterlife. It is a uh, SCN Live After Show podcast. And Sarah, who is host of Afterlife, which is a Collider Live After Show podcast, Sarah and I do a Bachelor podcast called Go Get That Rose. Uh, a lot of fun. We just it's not as serious as you might think it is. <laughs> so just check it out. We we just make fun of them more than anything. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You guys can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore AFK. You can also listen to me on Afterlife, which uh, Wade just mentioned. That's also here on the Merc with the Movie Blog feed. And if you want to hear even more of me, which I don't know why I would, you can listen to me on Into the Grid, a Power Rangers podcast I do with my Afterlife co-host, Mike Mixtape. You can follow that show on Twitter at Go Into the Grid. You can find this show and others on the Merc with the Movie Blog feed, which can be located on Anchor, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Radio Public, Breaker, and Overcast. And you can also follow Merc with the Movie Blog uh, on Twitter at Movie Blog Merc. Did I miss anything? Um, no, although keep an eye out on Merc with the Movie Blog channel on YouTube. Ooh. Uh, I think, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to start to put all of our shows up there as well now, too. All right, all right, awesome. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll uh, talk to you guys next week. Until then, we have spoken.